my friends. Welcome to your current astrology, tarot, and yoga class for the week of January 8th through the 14th, 2024. My name is Natasha, also known as Nurse Natasha. If you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, welcome back. So what we're going to do today, if you're new here, um, I'm going to tell you about the astrology of this week. We'll do a little astrology energy check-in together. Then we're going to do a tarot energy check-in together. And then I'm going to give you a yoga class for the week based on those energies. Um, I'm an accessible, trauma-informed, plus-size friendly yoga teacher. And my all the classes that I teach are all levels friendly. So maybe stick around if you're just here for the astrology. If you're just here for the tarot, maybe stick around for the yoga class or you totally don't have to. I'll put little timestamps in the description box so you can know what times are which. But we're going to start with the astrology and then move into the tarot and then the yoga class will be at the end. And again, this is for all signs. This is for the collective. So congratulations if you made it here. You're part of the collective. Um, yeah, we're just going to check in with the energy of the week of January 8th through January 14th. Now, the first thing that I got to say about this week, we have our new moon in Capricorn this week. This is our first new moon of 2024. It is in the sign of Capricorn and it is on January 11th. So that's kind of like the really big energy of this week. Um, I'm going to shuffle this deck while I tell you about the rest of the energy astrologically. So for this week, like I said, we have the new moon in Capricorn on January 11th. And this is our first new moon of 2024. I'm really excited about this new moon because we don't have the only planet actually I believe that's in retrograde right now is Uranus and that doesn't affect us like too much like all retrogrades affect us but you know the kind of farther planets don't affect us as much and that's the only planet that's in retrograde right now so you know we are kind of getting like the green light to go ahead and start working on our goals and to start doing stuff and I think we're still in the shadow period of Mercury retrograde but it's not as intense um, things are going to start to kind of clear up <clears throat> and we have actually Mercury moving into Capricorn um, so the Mercury retrograde that just happened was in Capricorn and then it went back into Sagittarius and now it's moving back into Capricorn um, and so we will actually have <clears throat> um, Mars Mercury and Pluto all in Capricorn with this new moon in Capricorn actually it'll be a little bit after the new moon in Capricorn but Regardless, it'll almost be a Capricorn stellium in the sky. And what's Capricorn about? Like, a lot of my really good friends are Capricorn stelliums for some reason. And I'm like, is it just because my, like, all my water and my fire, like, needs the grounding? But Capricorn is the workhorse or the work goat, I suppose I should say, of the zodiac. Um, Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, the planet of, you know, Big Daddy Saturn, karma, discipline, mastery. Um, you know, Capricorn in the tarot is actually ruled by the devil. And the, the devil gets kind of like a bad rep for being, you know, the card of the shadow self and the temptations and bondages and ties that bind, which it is. But Capricorn, excuse me, the devil in the sense of Capricorn is... Um, mastery the devil in the sense of again that Saturn energy Saturn is actually the character that you know looks like the devil on the devil card that's Saturn um, and that he, like again it is mastery it is discipline it is mastering the shadow self um, and mastering kind of all parts of you uh, so you know you can accomplish your goals what I've been saying about this is you know for being asked to become a master you can't be a master if Star Wars has taught us anything you cannot be a master until you've been an apprentice or you've been an, a beginner um, so this is the time to lay the foundation for your goals with all these planets in Capricorn with this new moon in Capricorn you always hear new moons are about manifesting, right? New moons are about goal setting, intention setting. This is the new moon that you should be doing all those things under. If you'd like my help doing that, I have so many things for you. I have a yoga class for the new moon in Capricorn. I have a tarot reading for the new moon in Capricorn. I also have a moon magic journal that has journal prompts and rituals for the new moon and all the moon phases. I have courses. I have all the things. So I'll be linked in the description box below. But if you want free stuff on my YouTube, I have a yoga class and tarot reading specifically for this new moon in Capricorn. And this is the time to be laying the foundation for your goals again with Mars and with Pluto and Capricorn Mercury going into Capricorn like this is the time to get stuff done this is the time to be direct and to go after what you want and I'm not saying you have to take like these huge leaps and bounds towards your goals right now that's not what it's about it's about calculated action it's about um, you know manifestation is demonstration demonstrating to the universe that you want your goals taking that baby step towards your goals that just lays the foundation of your goals like you know, I was talking to uh, my best friend who's a Virgo and my other best friend's a Capricorn and we were talking about the earth signs and I think of Virgo is kind of like the flowers and the trees and like, you know, Virgo is like the maiden 
And then Taurus is like the animal kind of energy of the earth. And then Capricorn is like the dirt. And I don't mean that as an insult. I mean like Capricorn is like the dirt, the ground, the foundation. Capricorn in the body rules our foundation, our bones and our skeletal system and our joints. Like this is the time with this week, with all the stuff in Capricorn, lay the foundation, lay the foundation for your goals, lay the foundation for your life, lay the foundation for whatever it is you want to do. That is what you should be doing. <laughs> so that being said, let's get on into the tarot part of this. Now already at the bottom of the deck, the hero fint is lurking. This is the card of Taurus actually. So again, heavy on that earth grounded energy. And the funny thing is the hero fint is like the master <laughs> like you know as i was saying like master and apprentice the hierophant would be the master the hierophant is like the spirit guide the teacher the one who's already like graduated and can teach other people like to do what they do it is a card of graduation it's a card of also structure um tradition kind of like the structures and institutions in the world that kind of like rule our lives so like government church all those things it can also be a card of marriage but i think in this case it's like again we are being asked to kind of maybe not necessarily like level up right now, but lay the foundation for your level up, lay the foundation for your graduation, you know, lay the foundation for you becoming a master. And, you know, <laughs> I'm not mad about it. Like, I, again, I always think of things in like pop culture, usually Star Wars references. I actually have um, Darth Vader as death and Darth Maul as the devil on my arm. So, you know, it's a vibe, but it's like, what... What steps can you set? What steps can you take that will lead you to that path of becoming a master? Like if we look at, you know, the Jedi, um, they have, you start as a Padawan and then you move on to Jedi Knights and, you know, you don't get granted the rank of master for a while, you know, or you're like Anakin and you're just like never granted the rank of master. Then you turn to the dark side. Anyways, um, you know, we're trying to not do that. We're trying to get on the path and set the steps and lay the foundation so we can make it to that point of master. So I knew chaos mode probably wouldn't work today because it's very much not chaos. It's very much structure and discipline. And we have the ace of pentacles at the bottom of the deck. Again, earth energy, um, the ace of earth literally being handed a gold coin from the universe. It's an offer coming in of a career, of money, of something physical, tangible, which again, is that very Capricorn energy. It's the start of the pentacles journey. It's the ace of the pentacles. Again, the start of the goals and the accomplishments in the physical realm. So nine of swords, We're st don't be stressed. Why are we stressing out about this, the world? Like we've had a cycle ending for sure. That came up so much in the cards from last year. Let's get all these cards out on the table so we can see kind of what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the cards, I mean, we're getting kind of dragged, but I'm not entirely mad about it. All right, so I just pulled two extra that kind of fell out. So here's what we're starting with. We have recent past, present, and future. In the recent past, we have the Nine of Swords and the Hermit. If you were stressed and you probably went hermit mode, if, or if you feel like you're still stressing, maybe you do need to go hermit mode. This is the card of Virgo, the hermit, nine of swords, anxiety, nightmare, waking up from a nightmare, still in a nightmare, stress in, not good. Um, if you have felt that way, or perhaps you felt that way in the recent past, you were like, you know what, I just gotta like hermit myself for a bit. I just need to kind of isolate myself and work on myself. There's nothing wrong with that, but I do think it's time for that cycle to end. Um, but if you're still feeling that type of way, if you're still feeling Nine of Swords, it's okay to take that time to go inward and like kind of hibernate and, you know, like isolate yourself and figure your own stuff out before you move forward. But in the present, we have the cosmos, which is the world in this deck, the end of the tarot, the closing of the tarot, the end of the fool's journey or the hero's journey in the sense of the tarot with the Ten of Cups. Like both huge cycle endings and celebration. The Ten of Cups is celebrating your emotional fulfillment, reaching your emotional goals. And I think in this case, you know, with we, the world is like, again, it's a cycle ending. And we had that um, a lot at the end of 2023. I was doing readings um, in 2023 and it was like, we just kept getting the world and kept getting the world. And last year was a huge cycle ending type of year, astrologically and, you know, energy wise. But 
you know, it's like, I think with that cycle ending, that really difficult cycle that we were dealing with, we have finally been able to figure out what our 10 of cups is. Like because of all the crap that we went through, that cycle closed and we were able to kind of get a glimpse of or figure out what our total emotional fulfillment would be, right? The 10 of cups, again, like the 10 of pentacles would be like the physical, like tangible physical world, wealth and abundance fulfillment. And that's great, but the 10 of cups is like, how do you feel on the inside? It's like you getting the fulfillment on the inside, family, love, emotions, friendship, that kind of thing. And we usually think that that only comes with when we get the 10 of pentacles. Like it don't, it's only going to come when we're rich and abundant and you know, whatever. And yes, you know, we live in capitalist society. We do need money and, and abundance and wealth to like function, but it's like, what does success and happiness mean to you on an emotional level? And I think we were kind of able to like figure that out or we're figuring that out presently. And that's what your 10 of cups is. So that's what you need to be focusing on. I think with these goals and with whatever hard work that you're doing under all these Capricorn placements is like getting to your 10 of cups. Like the 10 of pentacles is great. We want the money. We want that bag. We want that abundance, but what's actually going to make you happy. And then in the future, we have the three of swords and the queen of swords. You know, we never like to see the three of swords, but it's like, if you want to avoid the three of swords, you want to avoid that heartbreak. You want to avoid being stabbed in the heart with three swords, breakups, etc. You got a queen of swords it. You got to cut the cut the crap. The queen of swords is the queen of boundaries. The queen of swords is the queen of air. She kind of gets a bad rep for being the ice queen because she can take that sword and chop things off. If you're looking to avoid the three of swords, that's what you need to be in. But notice she's not chopping everything off. She has a butterfly in one hand and a sword in the other. She practices discernment. She's able to cut out what doesn't serve her and receive what does serve her. So that's just a note for the, uh, you know, the soon to be future, if you would like to avoid the three of swords, you need to stick to your guns is what I'm hearing. Like, don't let those people energy places back in that caused you that stress and anxiety and all that stuff. Um, then the two extra cards that fell out again were the hero fence and the eight of pentacles, which is the card that I relate the most to Capricorn it actually has a little Capricorn symbol up there. The eight of pentacles is the card of the grind of the hard work. It is the Capricorn card in the minor arcana. And it is that, that's what it is, the grind and the hard work. The behind the scenes work that you see. The, the Eight of Pentacles is like the montage of the, the Rocky montage where like it's like a year goes by in the span of five minutes where he's training and building strength and like learning to fight, whatever. That's the Eight of Pentacles. The work that you don't see, the work that you have to put in. You know, a lot of the times we only see the end result and that's, you know, I wish it worked that way, but it doesn't. This is the hard work that you need to put in. And again, it's bring it's it's leading us to becoming the master. So it's just a reminder that like, you don't just become the master of whatever it is you're trying to do just by magic. Like I wish you did, but you don't. You have to put in the work, my friends. You gotta. All right, we're gonna clarify with this Mystic Mondays deck if there's anything else that we need to hear under um, this week with all this Capricorn nonsense happening. What other messages do we have for the week of January 8th to the 14th? I swear some decks are so, so hard to shuffle just because I have tiny baby hands. <laughs> and this is one of them. It's not even that big, but I just have very small hands. All right. What other messages do we need to hear for this week? We got Mars and Pluto in Capricorn. We got the Capricorn new moon. We got Mercury in Capricorn on January 13th. All right. Temperance, moderation, balance, patience, harmony. Card of Sagittarius. We do have some things in Sagittarius right now. Venus is in Sagittarius. Mercury is currently right now in Sagittarius, but again, it's moving into Capricorn. We had a Sagittarius tell him in the sky. Um, before, look at there, there's the devil. I knew the devil was going to come out. The card of Capricorn. I actually used this card in one of my um, videos for TikTok when I was talking about the Capricorn new moon. I really love the design on that. Oh, what do you know? It's the tower. Of course, the tower is here. There's that ten of cups again and the two of cups. It's literally like <laughs> um, the... Uh, seen in Harry Potter and you know she who must not be named Blah! we support trans people here but um where Ron is like reading Harry's tea leaves and he's like you're gonna suffer but you're gonna be happy about it like it's literally the tower with the two of cups <laughs> you know we might have for some people who need to hear it or for some people this is the energy in this collective is 
a tower moment that has to do with the two of cups like uh someone coming in that you don't expect a friendship a soulmate some kind of connection coming in that just kind of like rocks your foundation and you're like whoa 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 i don't see it necessarily as a bad thing i see it as more of just like a shock where you're like who maybe it was like because the tower happens to erase kind of like the old tower and you know, we build from the foundation of that old tower. And maybe there is someone now that's in this, the beginnings of this new journey with you in this kind of foundation after a tower moment that you weren't expecting, perhaps. Um, but we have the devil with 10 of cups. Again, I really see this as like the mastery of the 10 of cups. You know, it's like when you can deal with your shadow self and when you can deal with your unhealthy coping mechanisms and heal the devil energy and master the devil energy that's when you're going to find your ten of cups and what actually makes you happy instead of like relying on the unhealthy coping mechanisms that you're like well it makes me feel good but it doesn't make me happy if that makes sense and then we have um temperance is with the hanged man or the hanged woman in this deck um it's like if you're feeling stuck again from maybe the nine of swords the anxiety take a moment take a moment before you move out of the hanged man energy, the hermit energy, because you don't want to get caught up in the devil energy. If you're not ready to master that devil energy, you don't want to like get caught up in it, if that makes sense. Take the break if you need to take the break. Take the pause if you need to take the pause. Don't move forward if you're unsure of what moving forward looks like. Take this Capricorn energy of all this, the new moon in Capricorn, all these Capricorn things to figure out you know, what moving forward looks like before you take those move, moves forward. We're just going to do some main themes here for this week. So what are the main themes? Ooh, water energy, interesting. Even though, you know, it is heavy on the earth energy, it's like, what do we need to grow the seeds that we plant? Water. What is the Ten of Cups? Water. Again, emotions. It's like, you cannot just be all work and no play <laughs> i think with the two of cups the ten of cups this water energy it's like don't forget that you also you can't just there has to be balance with that temperance card you can't just like go hard and just work 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 and bring yourself out there has to be balance we have the release card it has a knife on it you know somebody's got to do some release in if you're again still stuck and still unsure of like what your goals are for this year um you know what moving forward looks like you find yourself stuck in that nine of swords what needs to be released you know while i would say the energy this week is more about intention setting goal setting manifesting moving forward how can you move forward if you haven't released yet so oh gosh i'm just throwing cards jeez shift dimensional shift we love to see it we're shifting things all right there's three cards down here that just like yeeted themselves safe travel if you're traveling we have veiled and magic don't get distracted don't let that kind of wool be pulled over your eyes by just things that you don't need distractions in your life and i think there was another card that fell oh, there's two cards that fell or is that one i just threw a bunch of cards my friends all right we have past life and divine masculine and the past life card in this deck isn't necessarily talking about like your past life, you know, like spiritually, it's talking about leaving your old life behind, like in this realm, like, you know, the old you. And we have the divine masculine, which I do think is like very Capricorn energy, getting stuff done, boss mode, the emperor. It's like, again, if you're stuck, if you feel like that veiled energy, if you feel like the devil energy, the nine of swords, tap into your magic. You know you want to leave the old behind. The past life isn't serving you anymore. What do you need to do to set the foundation for the new life? That's what we're being asked to do this week. Like, clean up. I'm hearing, like, clean up the mess. Sweep up what needs to be swept up and left behind so we can, you know, because after that tower, things can get a little messy. When your tower has fallen, you know, it's a little crumbly. <laughs> like, your tower just fell. If you're still feeling like you're in that, aftermath of the tower sweep it up clean it up release what you got to release take that veil off your eyes see it clearly um be honest with yourself so if something's not working sometimes the the key to defeating the devil energy to mastering the devil energy is being honest with yourself and being like i'm doing something dumb 
you know, it's like that there's a saying that's like everybody's journey to like whatever starts with a person getting tired of their own bullshit. Like you take the wool off your eyes and look at yourself and your life honestly and be like, this is not working. Okay, I'm going to release that, going to move forward. And you can do that with curiosity and non-judgment, non-attachment. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We all have, have a shadow self. Be honest with yourself. Don't judge yourself. Sweep it off and move on. I have to sneeze. I think my sneeze is coming. Oh my gosh, excuse me. As soon as I started to talk about like dust and stuff, I was like, you gotta sneeze. Um, and get rid of that. Get rid of those, get rid of that dusty energy. We don't need it. The tower is done. It's over. Perhaps, you know, something crumbled from your old life. It's hard. It's terrible. It's not fun to go through, but we got to clear it out and we got to move on from that past life. So that's the energy of this week, my friends. Now, um, again, if you don't want to do the yoga class, maybe I'll see you next time, next week for this um, energy check-in. If you do want to do the yoga class, hang out with me. I'm going to go back to my mat and we're going to get into a yoga class based on this energy. All right, my friends, let's do our yoga class for the week of January 8th through the 14th. This is based on the reading that we just did. Um, you know, that reading was very, again, we have all this Capricorn energy. You know, last week we did like kind of heavy grounding, you know, very like kind of slow grounding energy. And this week it's like taking that grounding energy and like putting it into action. And I think the best way to do that, the best, the best way to work on like foundation and also discipline and determination and moving towards your goals is some warrior postures and we also did this in my membership here on youtube i'm hosting a challenge called magic on the mat and we just did this really lovely um warrior flow so that's what we're going to do it's going to be foundational but also action oriented foundational but also again that kind of working on becoming the master energy and like progressing from warrior one to warrior three so that's what we're going to do today as always, I recommend you have any props that you need around you for your practice. I have my blocks right here. That's pretty much what I think we're mainly going to use. And again, you don't even need the blocks. You can have anything that you need for your practice. Everything I say is an option, not an order. I'm going to give you a ton of variations. This is going to be mostly a standing flow. So we're going to get started standing at the top of our mats. We're going to warm ourselves up a little bit, and then we're going to flow through these warrior postures. So from standing at the top of your mat, you know, we're standing in our Tadasana Mountain Pose. So even though we are standing, this is very grounded. Our feet are still grounded into the mat. This is mountain pose. You know, I also think that Capricorn energy is very mountain energy. Again, you know, it's like mountain goat energy. It's very grounded, but it's also very tall and, and proud. So we're standing here in our Tadasana Mountain Pose. Feet are grounded into the mat. They can be hips distance or shorter or wider, whatever feels right. You can bring your hands to your sides. Palms are facing forward. We have active fingers, like we're shooting power out from our hands. We're standing nice and tall, like someone's pulling a string from the top of our heads. And we're just taking a moment to come to our space, to our mats, to this present moment. And we can do that by bringing our focus to our breath. Just noticing as it goes in and out, not changing anything about it. And notice what happens in the body as you breathe. So perhaps on the inhale, you feel the shoulders rise, the chest expand, the belly expand, taking up space. Then on the exhale, a gentle release. Continue to find your breath here. Deepening and lengthening with every inhale and exhale. And really feeling the mat beneath your feet, maybe squeezing the mat with your toes, feeling that grounding energy beneath you. We're going to start to invite in some movement and warm up our bodies here. We're going to inhale, reach those arms up overhead, really lengthening the spine. Exhale, we'll take a fold over the legs and in this forward fold, you can stay here for a moment doing what feels good. Maybe you want to widen the feet to honor make space for the belly and thighs. Maybe you want to rock from side to side. Maybe you want to grab opposite elbows. Listening to your body here. Again, focusing on your breath.
going into the base and the back of the legs, maybe the glutes, the low back. And gently we'll come to stillness. Hands can come to blocks or to the shins. Press into them. Inhale for a halfway lift, flat spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach and rise to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Again, you can kind of hang out here in your fold for a bit for a couple breaths. Do what feels right. Gently come to stillness, hands to blocks or to shins, press into them, inhale for that halfway lift, flat spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach and rise to standing. And exhale, hands to heart. We got one more just like that here. Inhale, reach. Exhale, folding forward. Maybe do something different in this forward fold this time. For me, I'm bending my knees a little bit more, really releasing the low back. Maybe you want to grab for opposite elbows, ragdoll here. And then again, we gently come to stillness, hands to blocks or to shins, press into them. Inhale for that halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach and rise. And exhale, hands to heart. All right, my lovelies, we're gonna work a bit on our legs, our balance and our core here because we're working our way up to warrior three again. If we're starting with the concept of, you know, warrior one to three, kind of beginner, apprentice to master, um, we want to master that final posture, that warrior three. And warrior three is a balancing posture on one leg and requires that core strength and kind of training that balance. So I encourage you, maybe you need a wall to help with your balance. Maybe you want to hold on to a chair. Anything that works, anything that helps you with your balance. So we're going to start again in our Tadasana Mountain Pose. I'm going to place my hands on my hips. Now I'm going to put all my weight into my right foot. So I'm kind of shifting my weight over to my right leg. And maybe I come to the ball of the left foot. So just lifting my heel up off the mat. Maybe I just hover that foot up off the mat. You're going to feel that balance shift. We're standing on one foot now, my friends. Now, something else you can do here is place this foot on a block. You know, again, that kind of helps with the balance. Or you can just, again, hover it. Maybe you bring it to hover kind of in front of you. Keeping that foot active helps with your balance as well, pointing or flexing. And now maybe you lift this knee so it comes directly out from the hip, forming a 90 degree angle there. You're going to feel that core engage as well. And we're just breathing and holding here. Maybe you focus your gaze or your drishti on something that's not moving. That also helps with the balance. And it's okay if you wobble and you shake and you fall. It's called yoga practice, not yoga perfect, my friends. And then when you're ready, we're gently going to lower that foot down and take it to the other side. So now I'm putting all my weight into my left foot, my left leg. Maybe I come to the ball of the right foot. Maybe I lift that right foot up off the mat. Maybe bring it to a block. Maybe start to bring it to the front. Ooh, see, them teachers fall, you know? And then we bring it again, if you can, that right knee is coming directly out from the hip, trying to make a 40 or 40, no 45, 90 degree angle there. Flexing or pointing the toes, feeling that core engage, and focusing on your balance. Again, it's okay if you wobble and you shake and you fall. And we inhale here, and when you're ready, exhale, release it. We're going to do that one more time on either side, adding a little bit onto it, and then we're going to go into our warriors. So, starting in our Tadasana Mountain Pose, I'm putting my weight into my right foot. Come into the toes or the ball of my left foot. Lifting that foot up off the mat, maybe bringing it out, forming that 90 degree angle. 
Now maybe, option to stay here or, or whatever variation that you're at, if your foot's still on the mat, it's on a block, wherever. Another option, you start to hinge forward, keeping a straight spine, so engaging the core as you start to lean forward with a straight spine, and bringing this leg back. The leg is still staying bent for now. We're just shifting our balance. You'll feel that core engage. Again, trying to keep a nice straight spine here. And then when you're ready, inhale, come up, and exhale, release. We'll do that on the other side. So now I'm putting my weight into my left foot, coming to my tippy toes on my right foot. Maybe lifting this right foot up. Maybe bringing it out from the hip, flexing or pointing the toes. And again, maybe if you want to take it a step further, we're hinging forward and this foot is coming behind us, keeping the knee bent, shifting that balance. And when you're ready to release, inhaling, straight, and exhale, release. You can shake out your legs. All right, we're going to get into our warriors, my friends. So again, from standing at the top of our mats, we're going to bring this right foot to center, and we're going to step this left foot back. Now, the left foot is going to step back not as wide as like a lunge. It's a little bit shorter. Your back foot's at about a 45 degree angle. My right foot's pointing straight forward, and then I'm bending into this front knee so it tracks over my ankle. It's not going past the ankle. It's tracking over the ankle. You can have your hands on your hips here, and as always, and as the energy of this week suggests, I want you to focus on your foundation first before we move into our warrior one. So these are the warrior one legs, Virabhadrasana one. Find this stable foundation here. You're really engaging your legs. You can kind of bounce a little bit without like wobbling or without falling. Really work on that foundation, that core strength here. And then maybe we square ourselves off to the center. So squaring off hips and torso. And then maybe we inhale our arms up. So when we have that more stable base, you know, it's not as wobbly. We're not as likely to fall. I'm breathing here in our warrior or Virabhadrasana one. Now we're going to inhale here and exhale, shift into our warrior two. So everything opens, arms open, your stance might widen a little bit and our hips go from close to open. So your stance might widen. Now this back foot, the leg stays straight, but it's parallel to the back end of the mat. This front foot stays exactly the same. Knee bent over ankle, hips are just now open to the long edge of the mat and our arms open up. Now again, check in here with the foundation of the pose. You know, our legs are strong, we're really strong in that lunge. Are your shoulders shrug up to your ears? Or are your arms straight out? You know, we're not tense here. We're holding our arms up. We're gazing over our front fingertips. This is our warrior, or our Virabhadrasana two. Breathing here. Now for our warrior three, we gotta shift through a high crescent lunge first. So we turn to face the front of our mats and spinning this back foot to lift the heel and come up onto the toes. So just like that, I'm turning and I'm lifting my heel. My front leg stays the same. That right knee stays bent over the ankle. You can have your hands on your hips here. I'm now in my high crescent lunge. So from here, this is where we start to get that hinge forward and we're putting our weight into our right leg. So I'm starting to kind of hinge my upper body forward, engaging the core, keeping my back straight. And then I'm gonna to start to see if I can hover this back foot. Now this is where you can grab onto the wall. You can bring your hands to blocks. You can grab onto a chair. This is our warrior three. The goal is to get the head in line with the shoulders, in line with the hips, in line with that leg, with the foot. Maybe even the arms extended overhead. But I want you to just start with how does it feel to lift that back leg up? You might fall, you might wobble, you might shake. Key here, our hips are not opening. When you start to open their hips, we're getting into a half um, moon posture. That's not where we're going. Warrior one, hips are square down to the mat. This back foot is engaged. 
You can extend your arms overhead. You can bring them to heart center. You could even take airplane arms. And we're breathing here. And again, it's okay if you fall, if you wobble. And to release, we inhale up and exhale, release that foot down. Shake it on out. You still got the other side, my lovelies. So from our Tadasana Mountain Pose, we're standing. We bring our left foot center, step our right foot back. First, setting up for this warrior one. Again, this back foot is at about a 45 degree angle, not as wide of a stance. Bending into this front knee and finding my stable base, my stable foundation, before I square off to the front. And then maybe I inhale my arms up. And I breathe in my warrior one. Now we take a nice big inhale here, exhale, open it up to our warrior two. Again, stance may widen, hips go from close to open, arms go from close to open. Check in with your base. How do your legs feel? How do your shoulders feel? Are we gazing over those front fingertips? Breathing here. Now we're gonna shift through our high crescent lunge into our warrior three. So I start to turn my hips to the front of the mat, coming up to the ball of the back foot, lifting my heel, finding my high crescent lunge, starting to put my weight into this front foot, leaning my torso forward, engaging my core, and maybe hovering this back foot off the mat. Point in your flexing, finding my warrior three. You can mess around with the arms, you can hold on to a wall. Just breathe and focus on that stable foundation, progress, building strength. And when you're ready to come out of it, we inhale up, we exhale. Release, shake it out, my friends. We did it. We made it through our warrior postures. Now we're gonna take it on down to the ground. From your Tadasana Mountain Pose, you can inhale those arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. You can plant those hands either on the mats or on your blocks and just step it one foot at a time on back to your child's pose. You can open the knees as wide as the mat. Make room for the belly and thighs. Sink those hips down to the heels. Stretch those arms out and just lower down into your child's pose. I've said it pretty much all this week. Child's pose to me is the most grounding posture there is. Very Capricorn energy. We're as close to the ground as we can get here, kind of bowing forward into the earth. And we're breathing in this child's pose. Connecting with the energy of the earth, the ground beneath us. Maybe you lift up all 10 fingers and bring them back down to the mat. And just notice every part of you touching the mat here, my friends. With every inhale, we fill up the chest, fill up the belly, taking up space. And with every exhale, we ground deeper, encouraging those heels, or excuse me, the hips down to the heels, sinking deeper into the mat. I will leave you in this child's pose for today, my friends. I encourage you to spend at least five to 10 breaths here, but you can take, of course, any other postures you would like for your day, for your practice. This is where I will leave you. Don't forget to join me for our new moon in Capricorn yoga and tarot. And I will see you next week for our weekly energy check-in and yoga class.